Welcome to Excel metric number 984. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. In this video, we have a column of mixed data, text, and numbers. And I need to get to the second to the last one, or the penultimate item in the list. Now, I've done other videos, and there's a reference video down here for look up the last number. Just give it a big number, do an approximate match, and it always gets the last. Or we could do big text, same idea. You just give it the biggest possible text, and it finds the biggest possible text. But we want the second to last. So in both of these cases, we took advantage of approximate match. If you give the lookup value bigger than anything in the column, it always gets the last one. But I, I can't think of a way to get to that second to the last one without building an array with all of the positions of the items and then say, hey, give me the second biggest one. You know, use the large function. So first off, I want to name this range. I'm going to highlight that and click up in the name box and just call this range. All right, so now from now on, that'll be called range. So if I were to highlight this, it's the range. What if we said, is anything in there not, that's less than, and then a greater than symbol, empty, and that's double quote. That's a, a null text string there. But this is the syntax for, hey, please give me a, or the, this is the array calculation for, please tell me true when you see something in the cell. So if I hit F9, all the trues represent the times we found things in the cell. So it looks like there's a true there and a true there. So that's the position. Now, I'm just going to use that in an if statement, right? Because I can't, I don't, those trues are hard to get at. But if I can, from those true, establish the position, this would be 9, this would be 11, right? And then I could take the second uh, largest, which would be 9. So I'm going to say if in the logical test. That's an array calculation in the logical test argument. An array, it's a range of values. We're doing some operation on more than one value. So it's an array calculation. This will require Control Shift Enter. Now the values I want, I want to build a, an array of relative positions, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, et cetera. So I'm going to say, hey, give me the rows of all those. But of course, row 5 is not going to work. So from that, I have to subtract the row. That would be 5 minus 5 is 0 to start this array out, so I add 1 back in. And that little construction right there, bloop, F9 will give me an array of relative positions. Now, this will isolate and just give me the ones I want, like 9 and 11, Control-Z. I leave the false off. The falses will go where there's uh, rows with nothing. F9 to evaluate. And sure enough, there's my array of relative positions. Now, I simply I simply say, hey, give me the second biggest using the large function. That's the array. I come to the end, comma, and I want the second biggest. So the k, I just put a 2. Now, highlight an F9. There it is. That's the row number. I can use an index. So now I simply say index. And I highlight this whole range right here. Oh, that's the range, comma, and the row number, that large is delivering it. Now, if I hit Enter, I get a value error because that argument right there require, if you put an array calculation there, it requires Control-Shift-Enter. So we have to Control-Shift and Enter. Now, if you have 2010 or 13, you can use these two arrays right here. Notice we did an if. So Array in large, I'm going to click that little screen tip and hit the F9. Notice we've gotten rid of the relative positions by putting a false there. But we did use the if function, so it requires Control Shift Enter, Control Z. I'm going to use the aggregate function. That's a new function in 2010 that does lots of different calculations. And one of the calculations it does is large. But that one doesn't require Control Shift Enter. But Remember, the array was falses and relative positions. Now let's come over here, and I'm going to paste that. That's all of the F9, relative positions. And I want to divide it by, remember, we got to get rid of the relative positions that um, don't have data, right? So instead of doing the if, I'm going to say divide by our condition. Remember, this condition just gives me trues and falses. But when I take this bunch of numbers divided by 
trues and falses are ones and zeros. Where there's nothing, I'm getting divide by zero errors. And then the 9 and the 11 are still there. Control Z, that is going to be our array. And we're going to use the aggregate that says large. Give me the second largest, Control Z. So now I'm going to say aggregate. Now, aggregate is great. I need to open one more parentheses there. Now, we want uh, functions 14 to 19 can do array calculations without Control Shift Enter. So I need to select large. I say, hey, that says aggregate, do the large calculation. So that's the function number. I can tell it to ignore error 6. That says for the options, forget those divide by zeros, comma, there's the array. And notice, comma. There's the K. It's saying, hey, which one do you want? I want the penultimate, so I'm putting 2. Now, this doesn't require Control-Shift-Enter. I just hit Enter. By the way, I neglected over here. When I did Control-Shift-Enter, it put those curly brackets in there. Again, the if function demands that we do that. But here, that aggregate, when I Control-Enter, control I didn't Control-Shift-Enter, there's no curly brackets up there. That's the row number. I simply put it inside of index, comma, and there we go. So the aggregate right there, that's just delivering a row number, just like large would. All right, so now, and this is mixed data. So if I change this to you know, whatever it is, it's always going to get the second to last one, Control Z. -Z. All right, so we have that great index aggregate and this great index large. We'll see you next trick.